Welcome to this video about deriving the gene's mass. Now before we derive it, let's just have a quick look at the definition of the gene's mass. So it's the mass of a cloud of gas where thermal expansion energy is counteracted by the gravitational forces. This then causes the cloud to collapse. So it's a mass where those potential forces and the, these thermal expansion energy are counteracted and they're balanced. And if they go beyond that, smaller or lower, then the cloud is no longer stable. So we then know that star formation pretty much occurs in these giant molecular clouds. So these are cold enough and dense enough to favour the formation of molecules. And we've got a nice image of one there. And then when we look a bit closer, this is the Orion Nebula. And we've got blue, bright blue stars in there, which are young, newly formed stars. And they have formed within these sorts of clouds. So we know that star formation is occurring in these molecular clouds. This is the assumption we're making when we're doing our derivation. So it all starts with the Virial Theorem. And this is an equation that relates the average total kinetic energy over time for a stable system consisting of n particles bound by potential forces. That's basically the gravitational forces balancing the kinetic energy of the gas. So K is your kinetic energy and U is your potential forces. And we can basically equate those and rearrange for our mass when we do that. So the starting point is going to be our gas kinetic energy, which we've got on the left there. And that's given in terms of the number of particles being considered in this system. On the right hand side, you've then got the gravitational potential energy, where we've got the mass of the cloud and the radius of the cloud. But the kinetic energy is not all that useful at the current moment because it has n, which is the number of particles. And in the real cloud, that doesn't make a great lot of sense to use that. So we can put that in terms of mass instead. So if we know the number of particles in a cloud, um, it's going to have some mass because each particle will have some mass. So mu is the um, average molecular weight and mh is your atomic weight of the of the atom and m is your mass of the cloud so we can use that in to get rid of this n and put it in terms of the mass instead which is actually what we want at the end so let's go back to this equation and put in our new expressions for k and u we can then just equate them because our potential energy is negative and we move it to the other side, so we'll basically just equate the two. And what we can then do is rearrange them for the mass. So we've got mass on both sides, so if we actually just divide by mass instead, then what we can actually do is just rearrange that single mass on the left-hand side, and we get this expression for the gene's mass. Now in that expression, we still have this r, which is the radius of the cloud which we don't want. So we can use the relationship between the radius, mass and density of a sphere and put that in terms of mass and density instead. And when we do that, again, we're going to have mass on both sides of the equation, but we need to basically remove it so it's only on one side instead. And when we do that, we get the expression at the bottom. So you need to do a couple of lines in order to get to that. Um, but what we want is the mass on the left and our genes mass. Is at the bottom. So this is our expression then for the genes mass and what we should see here is that the only variables in there is T which is the temperature of the cloud and your density rho. Now what does that actually mean? Well it means if your cloud has a mass larger than the genes mass it's going to collapse so the gravitational forces will overcome that thermal expansion energy and the cloud will collapse. So if you've got a mass greater, it's going to collapse. If your mass is less than the gene's mass, it's going to expand. So the gravitational forces can be overcome by that thermal expansion energy and it will expand. Now, if it's equal, so the cloud is equal to the gene's mass, then the two are going to balance one another out and it will remain fairly stable. Now, what this also shows you is that cool, dense regions are favourable to collapse. So if you decrease the temperature, your genes mass will also decrease. So smaller regions will be more susceptible to collapse when they're colder. And as you increase the density, then the genes mass also decreases as well. So it just tells you that cool, dense regions are going to be favourable to collapse. 
So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos.